Wait, wait, you're making an argument that, like, they shouldn't, they, they shouldn't go on strike because there's a restaurant that's struggling next to a fast food chain and they're struggling for money, therefore they shouldn't go on strike. But now you're also saying that you're in favor of them getting more money? Geeky Sparkles, you are all over the place. I feel like, I feel like you know that, like, uh... This is, you know, you're taking a pro-corporation stance, you're taking a pro-Disney, pro-Warner Brothers stance, and you're taking an anti-worker stance, and, like, there's a part of you that knows that you shouldn't do that, but you're still doing it, and it's, like, leaking out occasionally. Let's see what Clownfish says. Uh, theirs was right here too. Yep. Yeah, let's let's see. Uh, right. WGA or Writers Guild of America strike. Do Hollywood writers not understand basic economics? I'm willing to bet you don't. But let's let's see. Yeah. I am in charge. Yeah, she's in charge of this video. We're gonna talk about the impending Hollywood writers strike, the WGA strike. Yes. Okay. Oh, I think I think I saw this came out like a couple hours before it was official, but hey. Okay, so I was I was out on the internet today and I saw this story on Deadline and I thought, well, we're gonna have to talk about this. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about this. I thought you were gonna say we're gonna have to talk about. But before we talk about it, <laughs> before we talk about it, see, it's throwing me off. Before we talk about, it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Oh, I'm terrible about that. Make sure to like and subscribe this stream. Uh. Also, check out Actual Fandom. Check out Bobby Quarters. Check out Turf Nation. Check out Will Scredia. Uh, check out Organized Chaos Podcast. Uh, check out Eric's Debunks. Check out Eric's uh, Reloaded. Uh, check out all the, the initiative channels. This guys will get a woohoo from DT. Woohoo? Or am I supposed to woohoo today? You can get, you can woohoo. Woohoo. That's, are you mocking me? No, I'm not. That's my... That's not your woohoo. Exuberant. That is not. That is you trying to pretend to be me and I am me. not pretending to be you. Give me an actual woohoo. Woohoo. Okay. See, I was pretending to be that's excited. That's actually, that's actually more your speed. Yay. Um. <laughs> that's gonna be, that's gonna be the, like, my Squidward like, yay. Okay. All right. So I saw this article on Deadline today, and it's talking about the Writers Guild strike. And they're gonna explain it, the issues, the stakes. Why it's What's somewhere. affected. No, I know why they're doing it. All, well, I mean, obviously it's a, uh, it's a big story, right? But all these Hollywood papers, they're already scraping by, looking for news that people want to read, and if all the shows and the movies go on hiatus, what the hell are they going to talk about? Well, again, we talked about this before, and you have places like Netflix talking about how, well, if it happens, it happens, but we've got a bunch of Korean shows. Yeah, they don't care. So this happened before. This happened like 15 years ago. There was a writer striking back then. We didn't have all the streaming and things we have now. Right. This was uh, before YouTube was a big thing. This is before, you know, podcasts is before, you know, everybody is making their own content. And I think Hollywood really overestimates how important they are, especially in an era when they are... Hollywood overestimates how I'm... Well... We're talking about exclusively the writers are striking because Hollywood executives are making lots of money and they are struggling. What? Like, it... What? <laughs> Cutting shows, canceling That's movies... That's the Canceling stuff. Like, you're, you're literally... This is what I don't understand... And uh, uh, a friend of mine wrote me the other day. He's like, oh, yeah, now that all these uh, websites are losing ad revenue, now is the perfect time to try to unionize. Now, they're already mm -hmm. unionized. But usually what happens is so many workers and, and look, I feel bad if you're getting laid off. I'm sorry. I am. I'm not trying to be a dick about it. But so many of these workers don't realize the economics like the money has run out. You're actually making it easier for them. That is a good point. Uh, Geek Prime uh, 29. Geek Prime X 2099. Um, yeah. If uh, if Hollywood dies. What are these guys going to be talking about? <laughs> to just cancel your projects because they're like, well, we we're going to cancel anyway. Now there's a writer's strike. Now we have an excuse to cancel everything. Well, I think what over. happened was during the pandemic, they all decided they were going to do more, more, more. Well, obviously, if something like, yeah, uh, the, the argument of they're going to cancel stuff during the writer's strike. Yeah, they might. Um, they absolutely might. But if it's popular and it makes them a lot of money, they're probably not going to strike it so, or uh, cancel it. So, yeah, um, it will. They probably will be a bit more willing to cancel stuff than they normally would be more and more yeah. and because everybody was going to streaming and they thought oh. it's absolutely a threat uh, uh something that would happen i'm certain uh, the writers knew this going in uh number one this happened 15 years ago and number two i'm sure the union brought up to them a uh, strike is always brought up as a last measure you don't like you don't want to just strike you don't um writers are looking at having a massive loss of pay during this period um the idea is just to hopefully pinch uh 
the uh, the executives uh, pocketbooks just enough that they uh, they give. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure they knew this going in. Oh, this, this, this gravy train's never gonna end. So they greenlit a bunch of stuff, and which they've turned around and canceled a bunch of stuff. And then the things that, that these writers got on, and a lot of them, I'm sorry, were activisty Hollywood types, and they made changes to things that did not go over well. And since the viewership sucked, they got rid of them. But what's going on? Okay, number okay, again, streaming is booming. So as far as viewership, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Streaming's booming. Um now, uh, theater numbers have gone down because of the uh, pandemic. Um, again, I'm not sure if you guys heard of it. You guys never seem to bring it up. Uh, but box office numbers have been down since the pandemic. They're building slowly. Um, but yeah, they're still recovering. So yeah, just FYI. On is the people that are in these unions think that one, they should be paid more. Yes. Even though they're cutting out. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Nope, because I am kind of concerned. They're talking like all of Hollywood's on strike. And it's like, no, it's... The writers, the the writers are on strike. You do understand the difference between ho the writers and all of Hollywood, right? Like I don't even know what all of Hollywood would go on strike. We're we're going on strike against the people for not going to the theaters post COVID in bigger numbers. Like that's not a thing. They aren't gonna do that. Um, yeah, it's a writer strike. Everything and two that even if their show is cut, they should be there. They should just hire more of them um, for the other shows to make up the difference. Which yeah, makes no flipping sense. Literally, they're, what they're calling for is to be like, oh, we need to make sure we have more people in the writers' room. I'm like, actually, that has too many cooks in the kitchen. You look at the shows. It actually depends. It actually depends. Uh, some shows work well that way. Doctor Who, I don't know if it still is, but for like classic Who, uh, there is literally a writers' room. Um, I know, actually, for lots of series, what they would do is they'd bring together the writers for the season, and they'll come up with, like, the storyline for the season, and then they might, like, issue, okay, you do this episode, you do this episode, you do this one. Um, so, like, it's not necessarily, hey, like, we're going to have 15 people, and we're going to each write each script for the series, but they will have, like, all get together, come up with a unified vision for what the series should be. And then they will, like, figure out who does what steps, so on and so forth. Uh, that's what you figure out in a writer's room. Um, that's education. And, yeah, uh, you guys just comment on one of my videos. So, apparently, you're watching. So, Clownfish TV, make sure to like and subscribe. Those that are the most successful, a lot of times they are the vision of just one or two people just getting it done versus having... They might have a few writers that work underneath them, but yeah. Right, but they, they're overseeing it versus having like 50 people in the show being all over the day. Well, there's differences. Uh, yeah, you, you, there can be issues of too many cooks in the kitchen, but it all depends on the show. It all depends. Like uh, Babylon 5, uh, what? J. Michael Straczynski was the first person to write like a whole season of any show, I think, at that time. I think it was like season three of Babylon 5. Um, so that was definitely kind of more of a unified vision. And you will have shows that are more unified visions with a direct showrunner. But you also have shows that, uh, you know, even if there is a direct showrunner, they'll pull together a group of writers to, to work on it. Damn place, mm -hmm. you know, or there being so much red tape you have to jump through to get something done. Right. And I, well, I agree that the writers that, that do have work should be paid you know, better because they haven't been getting increases, increases in pay. Oh, oh, she's pro union. Awesome. I think that their demands are kind of ridiculous. So here, this is like... This whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Wait. You think they should get paid more, but you think their demands are ridiculous? Okay, let's see what she says. Let's let's see. Two sides. One side are the Hollywood studio network streamers and hundreds of motion picture producers, blah, blah, blah. And the other is the Writers Guild of America, which represents writers in Hollywood who are members, which most working scribes are. And they're talking about their unions and things. Okay, what's the issue? The survival of writing as a profession is at stake. No, no, it's not. No, no it's, it's not. not. Um, they said they're, they're talking about how they would be making good living wages. It's much harder to do these days. Yes, because seasons are shorter and they're cutting projects. Yes, yes, yes. That's the problem. Seasons are shorter, and they're using it as an excuse to, to cut down on how much they're paying the writers, and that's causing them to have trouble like getting by uh, over the years. Um, it's hurting their pocketbooks. Um, that's part of how they're pinching out writers, and that's part of why they're going on strike. Yes, yes, you're getting there. I feel like you're getting there. You're getting there. What, is, is it Sparkles? What's the name of the, the, the woman? It's like neon and sparkles, right? 
something like that. But anyways, I feel like she's like so close to getting it, but she's not going to get there, obviously. I feel like that. Well, let's see. Maybe she gets there. Maybe maybe this video will have a twist. And she's like, I'm I'm for the writer's strike. Let's see. <laughs> Geeky Sparkles. That's it. Thank you. Driven in large part by the shift to streaming, writers are finding their work devalued in every part of the business because it doesn't bring value. That, that's OK. So, th God. OK. Economics. There's a book out there called Who Moved My Cheese? Yeah, you brought this up. And it's an old man book for old man market, but it's very appropriate in the situation. The economy is changing. The landscape, the entertainment landscape is changing. What worked 20 years ago doesn't work now because people have endless possibilities without Hollywood. Yes, you're right. The landscape changed, which is why they need a new contract. You see that contract they did 15 years ago or however long it's been since they've done a new contract. It needs to get updated with the times. And if it doesn't get updated with the times, and they need to go on strike to to make sure it gets updated to something that they can live with. And really, most of the shows on streaming, every one of these streaming services might have one or two big hits, and then like hundreds of garbage shows that never get renewed or whatever. Well, so it's like okay, let's we'll, do, we'll put it. Some so, using your argument that you just displayed, if if a show, um, if lots of people, like a hundred people, put in like two months of work on a show which actually they'd probably even put in more they like if we're talking about a season of a show that could easily be like 100 people putting in like a year of work on a show easily if that show does poorly using your argument those people don't get paid like does the year of their life flush down the toilet does that seem reasonable especially if they're 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 being hosted by someone like netflix or disney or something something that can definitely afford to pay them that doesn't seem reasonable to me. I, I think uh, I think they should probably get paid no matter what. Simple terms for simple people. Um, you have a restaurant, okay? And then a fast food chain comes in and they start taking all your customers from your restaurant, okay? So now you have a third of the business your restaurant had before. You do not hire more staff at that restaurant, even, you know, to, to, even though everybody else is getting laid off and you have a third of the work. You do not hire more because you don't have the money to hire more. And even if the owner owns 10 different restaurants and has money, they're separate entities. And that restaurant is under no obligation to. This is all under the assumption that Hollywood is having trouble with money. Uh, as we saw with the Adam Conover uh, clip, he brought up how uh, the executives are doing fine. The executives are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Just just for them. That's just take home pay for them. Um, so yeah, uh, obvious, like, obviously if the rest, if you're dealing with a restaurant and it's struggling and like the guy who owns it is having trouble making ends meet. Yeah, no, that you might, you might have trouble asking for higher pay or more worker at this at point. But when, uh, but although I would say if you are running a business and your business cannot pay people living wage, then maybe your business is inviolable. Uh, I hate to say that, but that that might just be the case. That being said, when we're dealing with uh, Hollywood, it's not like the failing restaurant because Hollywood is still making money. It's not failing. These guys like to talk like it is. I guess that's part of their narrative that it's failing, but it's not. Hire more, more people at that restaurant because you're upset at, at higher rates because you're upset that the restaurant isn't doing well. That's not how the world works. They, they, here's the thing. A lot of these writers... And I'm not saying everybody on Twitter, <laughs> a lot of these writers, especially younger writers working for streaming services, have not been living in the real world. We've had eight or 10 years where there was funny money going around. Oh, you mean like, all this stuff. like five star cafeterias and coffee bar, a wine bar, you know, uh, meditation rooms aren't standard business practice. I don't think that's a thing writers have that the executives definitely have shit like that, but that's not a writer's thing like. You do understand there's a difference between writers and executives, right? Like, you don't think Bob Igor and David Zasloff are writing the shows, do you? I mean, what? For people outside of Hollywood? No. No. What? Oh, you my God. You don't say. But, but what about the masseuse? The masseuse. I have a masseuse. I call him Neon. <laughs> so. I, was, I was waiting for you to name somebody else, and I would be like, well, that's a whole other video. We're going to have to. Yeah, Raul. Oh, that was my Spanish name in Spanish I know. class. You told me before. Oh, okay. I thought I'm just like, wait. I'm like, how many Raouls do I know? Raouls. You used to make jokes about Raouls. Yes, that Raul. was your Spanish.
That that's a good point, Wallace and Gromit fan. Yeah, clownfish TV are not living in the real world. Your name the is Mine was mine was French yeah. and it was Chantal. Chantal. Anyway, yeah, yes, so, that's right. And I actually had a, a, a crawdad I caught in the creek and I put in a fish tank. Don't do that because they make the water filthy. But I had and I named him Raoul. I like that guy. Yeah, they just made up a, a random scenario, and they're like, oh, that, that's why they can't strike. Uh, Hollywood writers can't strike and ask for more pay because a restaurant next to a fast food. Uh, chain is failing and that's why hollywood writers can't ask for more money i mean i can't argue with that nailed it so i see i knew and you fed him bacon anyway that's why the water was he's an abomination anyway so let me continue they're talking about their devalued work okay while company profits have remained high no they have it and spending on content has well, they've remained high enough for the executives to still be uh, cashing big paychecks, so, uh, they? Bro, no it's not. Writers are falling behind. The companies have used the transition to stream. And that's the thing. Like, I have to wonder how much they're making uh, streaming, because I bet you that's where they're making a lot of the money now. Um, I'm sure they're still making, doing all right in the theaters, but, like, streaming's got to be where it's at now. I mean, to cut writer pay and separate and separate writing from production, worsening working conditions for series writers at all levels. They've shrunk the series orders. And when you have less of a show, you need less writers. And yes, yes, yes. When you have less of a show, you need less writers. True. But you know what? Those writers still need to make a living. The companies are, are, are tightening their belts like Disney and them are cutting all over the place. Amazon... All of them. Facebook, everybody's cutting because there's not, a, they don't need all these shows. And what is, yeah, and the problem is, is again, it's like, it's not even an 80-20 rule with these streaming services. It's more like a 95-5 rule. Like, of the content they're producing, only 5% of that content actually brings any value to well, the platform. The, the mindset for streaming was in Disney, like Bob Chapek even said that, it was it was a quantity over quality. Well, that has bit them in the ass. So, you know, during the pandemic, since the pandemic especially. This bit them in the ass. People want fewer shows, but they want good shows. Well, that means there's less going to be produced and the money's going to be you know sent to several good shows as opposed to two dozen shitty shows with like one or two good shows and they're trying to refocus so they're not going to fucking hire if, if the writing industry what it was and when the first when the other strike happened what was it like 2008 2007 yeah. whatever it was it's probably quadrupled in number since then all right and they want more pay and more writers they literally want a show that makes oh i could check out yellow flash too i haven't checked him out in a long time so yeah i can do yellow flash too after this see what his take is and he hired five writers to have like 10 writers in there to make sure they all stay employed at higher rates which makes no fucking sense and no company is going to do that uh, this is uh, like I, I cannot stress to you this is gonna god this is gonna be such an eye-opener for so many people in so many industries you all have been living in fantasy land you have been They've living been writing it you've been writing fancy you've been living in fantasy land so many of these writers uh so many of these people working in tech um, you know, younger people, especially like you got to, you, you know, you basically you have to pay your dues, you got out of college. Uh, a lot of times they have the right, the, the right check boxes. They're the right kind of people. So they kind of jumped to the head of the line, got hired at these companies that had ridiculous money to burn. And now they're finding out that it's gone. The What's gone? The money? No, they're, they're, they're still breaking in good profits. Money's gone. The venture capital has gone. So now businesses have to go back to being actual businesses. Mm-hmm. What the hell are you talking about? Like, there was a time period where these businesses just had, like, ton, like, like, they, these businesses are huge and they still have tons of extra capital. And what are you talking about? Do you honestly think there was a time period where these businesses had extra capital and were just like, we're just going to burn it on riders. We're just going to spend billions of dollars on riders. And, you know, um, you know, n now they're having to tie in that belt because they can't. Do you think that was a thing? That's, uh. Oh my God, where they have to turn a profit. So so you're not going to have the luxury of, you know, having these companies fund your multi-million dollar fan fix anymore that don't make any money and have no path forward to mm -hmm. profitability. And you're not going to... Yeah, that's a good point too. They brought up the tech bubble, which like Hollywood's been around before the tech bubble. That's, that was, that's a different thing. Be able to attack your audiences long term and dr actively drive customers away. I like that. Attack your audiences and actively drive customers away. Uh, I need sources. Like, when do they do that? 
<laughs> because that company needs that money because they can't just go to Silicon Valley Bank and dip in and take a few hundred million more out. Well, the downside too for writers is there's so many of them now and there's so there's so fewer jobs that, you know, it puts these studios in the catbird seat because they can be like, well, if you don't want to take what we're offering, well, there's like 10 other people who want a job so bad, they'll take it. And what is going to happen? Now, I don't know. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying no, that's going to happen. Right. What will happen? And I don't know the logistics of it or if they're allowed to or whatever because Netflix is more of a their studio, but they're also a tech company. They will go outside the studio system, outside of the union system to find talent if they can do it they'll do more comedy specials They'll yeah more- well if they can do it i guarantee you they all will um that's the thing they, they may not be able to do it but like i guarantee you if they have the option to go outside the union system they will fucking do it um corporations just care about their profits and whatever they can do to get the profits up that's what they will do that's why unions are important do more independent shows that people are producing other places. And so it's good for independent people. It is. And they'll go out to social media. They'll see who's actually bringing it on social media. And they'll be like, let's let's do a show based on that. Hey, Netflix, <laughs> call me. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Why? Why? I know, like, we need some writers in the writer's room. Let's cl- call Clownfish TV. Because they do a great job with the two little icons in front of a news story, reading the news story and making bad calls. So let's call them up to write stuff. What what argument is that? So they're saying, what do the writers want? They want to see gains in comp- security. Comp- yeah, basically, compensation residuals and curbs on mini rooms where groups of writers work in advance on the production of a television series to break stories and write scripts. But that's how it was. And they argued the producers were well able to compensate. You make enough money at that studio. You you should be giving us the money. Well, these actors are deciding with the writers. Why aren't they taking pay cuts so the writers get more money? Yeah, this is like this whole system is going to collapse. It's not sustainable. This is the new economic reality. 2023 is going to be a year of fundamental change in entertainment and media, and these people are, are really, really slow. They're really, really dumb. Seeing, seeing- well, you just said it's going to be a year of fundamental change in media. Don't you think maybe the writer's strike is part of that change? Like, I'm not even sure where you're getting the evidence that it's going to be a fundamental change in media. But if you think that, and right now there's a strike, which doesn't happen all that often, don't you think that's going to be part of it? Doesn't that support what you're saying? Even in, like for blogs with the, with the, yeah. with the money, um, the entertainment segments of the industry's major companies: Netflix, Paramount Global, Warner Bros. Discovery, Fox, Disney, Comcast, NBC Universal posted an average of twenty nine billion in annual uh, annual operating income between twenty seventeen and twenty twenty. Operating income, right? That's not the same thing as profit, right? Like to see media companies' profits in twenty twenty two are lower, but these companies expect improvement as they build towards. Well, well I think uh, it's worth noting. Um, lots of people don't really seem to acknowledge this, but in business. Uh, profit is actually not needed. Um, profit is literally what you make after you pay back everything. So, like, once you pay back all everything you owe for a project, everything you're supposed to do for a project, once you pay all that back, all that extra is profit. Profit is literally the extra. People talk about, oh, you you need to make huge amounts of profit for your business to, to run. No, you actually need to make zero profit for your business to run. You just, as long as you're, 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 hitting everything you need to hit you're good uh so profit is literally extra money increased profitability and streaming there's too many they're eating each other yeah not if they're overpaying their staff for shows that aren't going to perform they're not going to make any profits they're they're admitted their profits are down so let's ask for more money that's what all these people are doing that's why they're cutting everything this is common sense um god it hurts all these bloggers yeah how dare how dare these fucking writers want a like a livable wage those fuck faces like seriously like how dare they ask to like live and not squalor like what argument is this now you know they're all they, they see that the ad rates are down so they're like oh let's go unionize and then you know what that's usually followed by hey we're shutting your blog down mm-hmm. because they know they can, the companies know they cannot afford to keep everybody on at the amount of money that they're making. And I can tell you again, as you know, people that run blogs, literally, we're watching the situation very closely and the blog advertising revenue is running out. It's 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 really dropped off a cliff. And uh, some of the video ad rates have gone down. YouTube actually posted a loss. Mm-hmm. Um, now we've actually been holding pretty steady. YouTube has actually been struggling. They they That's actually true because uh, the issue of YouTube isn't that it has issues posting ads and selling ads because it does that magnificently it's posting ads all over the place the problem with youtube is it takes a lot of server space and it's expensive to run 
Um, that's why there has been a real competition for YouTube, which there desperately needs to be. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's expensive business to run. Um, I'm certain it's probably getting to a point where it's, uh, making money, but yeah, it's, it's a rough one actually. But if you're a, a big company, a couple percents, it could be the difference between hiring, you know, 70 people and hiring a hundred people, you know? Right. Um, so it's like, we, they can't absorb the but losses. They're they're, they're, they're probably. Oh, overpaying. Yeah, I was about ready to say Sketch got hands. You know, I, I I would say there's such a thing as overpaying executives. But yeah, overpaying staff, yeah. I, I don't believe in that. Um, pay them what they're worth. Uh, which they, they almost never do. Like, no one, no one gets paid what they're worth in this country. You're either uh, one of the super rich guys, in which case you're getting way overpaid for your worth. Or you're like... 99.999% of the rest of the population where you're massively underpaid for your work. Profits are lower. Yes. So they're, so they're like, well, your profits are down. Um, you're cutting stuff, but you need to not, if you're cutting stuff, you need to take whatever show, you showed five people on it. Well, now you have to have 10 people on it because to make, so everybody stays employed and pay us more. That's not how this works. That's how none of this works. And then they said that. Well, that that's the plus side of a union. You can start saying, hey, um, I want these things to happen. And if these things don't happen, uh, I'm not going to be uh, working, uh, doing the projects for you. Um, they do want to have different things to establish policy on AI. I do agree with them on that because AI is, is, is concerning in, in the art field, in writing and different things. I get where they're coming from for AI. Yeah, well, yeah, because the problem with AI is it's literal. Well, <laughs> so are some writers. I was going to say it's literally just taking pre-existing things and recombinating right. them. Um, but... The, the, the irony in all this is, is that the AI might actually be better because if you tell somebody – and there was a – I think it was Perch. Uh, Perch is a comic book YouTuber. Mm -hmm. and I think he was talking about how chat GPT could generate a better X-Men comic book script that's closer in tone to classic 80s, 90s X-Men than what Marvel's producing now. Because oh, well, they, yeah, that would be hard. Because it's trying to uh, create something that the reader is going to enjoy based on past success. And the people they hire currently, a lot of them are trying to create something that everybody will not enjoy except yes. for them and their five friends. Yes. And all the for hipsters. You mean the the stuff that's largely been kind of successful? I mean, I I'm, I'm certain they're talking about the the woke stuff. Um, I don't know if they'll actually say that, but I'm sure that's what they're talking about. And uh, overall, uh, companies that go woke, uh, will see their numbers go up. So, yeah, hipsters are like, oh, you aren't gonna buy the damn book anyway. We're gonna make. Well, Wallace and Gromit fan, I do think there's a threat of AI, but it's not by itself, because AI by itself is garbage. But there is the threat of AI writing a script and uh, them hiring a writer for significantly less than they normally would just to punch it up. Star Wars very niche for us. Right, yeah, right, right. For our representation. Yeah, that's so, not Star Wars. Sorry. So what do the streamers and the, the mean, nasty streamers and network, networks want? Well, if they want to make sure they can keep making profit because if they want to stay in business so there's jobs for writers 10 years from now, they need to. How do they not understand? Because this is because these people do not have the grasp on basic economics. It blows my mind how they even passed high school. This is common core in action. The, the piggy bank is empty. The piggy bank you is empty. You can't get any more money out of the piggy bank. Um... You, God, I think it's really interesting how they're really going to bat for these big Hollywood uh, studios. Like, all of a sudden, this writer's strike, and all of a sudden, all these people are like, fuck, yay, Disney. Yay, Warner Brothers. Yay, Universal. Yay, big corporations. Fuck unions. Yay, corporations. It's really interesting. And I'd like to see their source on, oh, they're so broke. They're so broke. Uh, do we have a source on that one? I, I know I know when you add, you know, zero plus zero and it equals zero, that that might not be common core math. And some people are going to say it's racist. <laughs> they do. It's racist to say that I have zero dollars. But these companies you're working for, if they play by your rules, they will have zero dollars and there will be zero jobs. For anyone. For anyone. Mm -hmm. For anyone. Yeah, you know, I don't you know, want to tell they you. They have to employ a lot of people, not just writers. You are you putting, I, look, I'm not trying to. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing I kind of brought about earlier. Um, writers really seem to get hit the, the earliest because uh, probably because they get paid the least. So, uh, yeah, that's why we see lots of writer strikes. Uh, at least I, I, I imagine they're getting paid the least that are unionized. Um, like I said, there's obviously an issue of uh, graphic artist. I'd be a dick. I, I do agree in cases. In cases, there are absolutely uh, reasons to unionize what they are doing right now. And the same thing happened with the bloggers. 
What they're doing is they see how bad things are getting and they want to make sure that they can't be fired or if they are fired, they get a massive payout. Mm-hmm. That That's what this, this is an oh shit moment. Mm-hmm. We better get ours before we get gone. That, that's they all have, this is about. They have, you know, a thousand, I'm just using an example, a thousand writers when they need maybe 500. Right. And the other 500 are like, well, you have to still keep us employed and pay us more. That's not how That's not how the real world works. Okay, they said, the line of argument from producers says the streaming is still emerging business and studios and networks don't know what the profit margins will look like. Or how- Yeah, they always say that while they just rake in the profits. They're like, we don't know what it's going to be. And then they just start raking it in. It's like, you know, it's something how they'll be achieved. Yes, true. Because right now we're in the middle of a streaming war and everybody and their, their dog has a streaming service. And what's happening it's is- like dog with a blog. Yeah. I, I just want to point out my dog has a fantastic streaming service. Uh, you guys just subscribe. Everyone, everybody has oh, a stream. Oh, with the show. Well, pretty much. I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, oh that's, that's Jada Pinkett. They took her show oh, off. Oh, we're going to talk anyway, about that too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, everybody has these, these these streaming services. And what's happening is because there's so many and it's costing people more than cable at this point. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, I do think there actually are uh, too many um, streaming services. It gets a bit ridiculous. Um, am I paying more than I might be paying about as much as cable? I know cable prices are getting outrageous, though, so maybe not. I don't know. People are cutting the cord on them, too, mm-hmm. and they are eating each other. And because there's not enough money uh, in the- eating each other. Uh, do you mean competition? Is that what you're talking about? That's supposed to be what capitalism pretty much runs on. These companies, they're cutting, you know, jobs and shows right and left. And they're, they're sticking with performers, the ones that, that do well. And a lot of them have a uh, good writing. You mean like they've always done? Like they do the shows that do well, get extra seasons? Is that the thing they always do? You You know that, right? Getting good characters, good whatever. And they aren't super, super heavy activism driven shows. OK, so they only can afford to keep they only can afford 100 shows. They can't you know, make 500 shows to employ, you know, thousands of extra writers at high price pay points because you, you, you're you mad. You mean, no, I, I don't believe they're asking for whatever you're asking for. Um, in fact, I need a source to see where they're asking specifically for that. I think they're just asking for uh, more writers so they don't get stressed on certain projects. Uh, essentially, it sounds like they're asking uh, less writers to do more work. What about everybody else who works on shows? What about their jobs in there? Should they just get all get fired to give you more money? Well, that's what's going to happen. They- well, that's the thing. All the money is going to the top. And no, those people's jobs will not be affected because uh, essentially the writer's just asking for a fair shake. You don't understand. This has happened before. What's going to happen is there are going. So they already know this, which is, which is why they're trying to sneak in. Oh, you got to make sure you have so many people in the writer's room because what happens is be like, OK, well, if now writer costs, you know, just, I'm just spitting numbers out there because I don't know who's getting paid what. If a writer used to cost one hundred thousand dollars and now they cost two hundred thousand dollars and we used to have 10 writers. Well, now we can only afford five writers. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, maybe less because they keep shrinking. They don't right. have the money they used to have. So now they're trying to argue they have more money. But I, I really need sources about how these uh, businesses are struggling. Like these, these guys are really towing the line. These businesses are struggling so hard. Oh, they're really struggling to make ends meet. These poor multi-million, possibly billion dollar corporations. Yeah, they'd definitely be multi-billion. I mean, Disney paid like four billion for Marvel and four billion for Star Wars. So that's a multi-billion dollar corporation. So please tell me, tell me, Clownfish TV, how multi-billion dollar corporations can't pay writers a living wage tell me about that i don't i don't buy it operating income operating income is not the same thing as Uh, yeah exactly sketchy got hands it's this is uh the writers are kind of the ground floor for this thing so if it's gonna hit the writers it's gonna hit everybody else eventually profit and yeah so anyway i'm sorry i'm just like i I don't understand how they don't understand netflix c co-ceo ted sarandos recently estimated the company's expected content spend for 2024 17 billion okay that's a lot of money and two and a yeah, it sounds like they could probably pay the writers a solid wage out of seventeen billion, right? Right. Half of that is going to Korea. Yeah, and reported Q1 free cash flow that zoomed to two point one billion compared to eight hundred million in the year ago quarter. That's pretty healthy emerging business. Yeah, but you have to remember too, um, they prob- they cut stuff, so yeah. they had more money. Yeah. They were spending less and had more money coming in. That's how profit works. If you cut a lot of shit and then you have more money left over, that's profit. Well, that take a. Cl- Yes, that yes, profit is the extra money. 
Are you, are you saying that the writers should get paid less so they can have more profit? Jesus Christ. Class, I don't want to tell you. Does this mean that we're not going to get a season six of Netflix? Sh yeah, Wallace and Gromit fan, like, you know, they're talking about the Korea thing. And yeah, maybe they will do something like that. It'd be kind of shitty, but like, you know, the, the, I mean, there might actually already be a deal in the works after the success of Squid Game. So like, you know, maybe Netflix will be less affected because they'll have Korean programming. And honestly, Korean programming has been pretty good, but that doesn't affect the Writers Guild of America, which is who's going on strike, which would be a lot of your Hollywood studio stuff. And, you know, even if they get Korean programming, it is an American audience. They're probably not going to be thrilled reading subtitles for all their new content. she -ra? Oh, yeah. You know what I say? I have two all you she stands who just will not stop obsessing about me. They didn't get this far into the video. Don't fuck they? you. Fuck you hard. Oh, they fuck themselves hard. Fuck you hard with Bo. Because that does not catch her at Adora just to piss you off. Anyway. Some of them probably prefer Bo. Well, you know what? Those people, then, then, then they'll be happy. But usually the people that give us a shit ton of trouble are Kedora fans. You know what? People still care about classic Shira. They already kicked shit on and stepped over your Shira. Anyway, <laughs> um, but keep obsessing, bitches. So anyway, we're talking about this. They said that we're, we're, we're talking about we're all partners and charting the future business together, committed to reaching a mutual beneficial deal. They want, they, they basically are. You know, I don't know that much about Shira really at all, other than that she exists. Um, and lots of people like these guys get upset about her. And I also know my daughter loved the show. So that's where I stand on it. <laughs> Saying, we'll work with you. But the thing is, it demands. Oh, I'm certain, uh, Dumb and uh, Dumb and Dumber, the, the Korean stuff will be dubbed. Um, so yeah, I guess if you're okay reading or uh, with the dub stuff, that's cool. I, I know I can't handle uh, live action dubbed. I'm fine with animation dubbed because animation is dubbed by its nature. But like live action dubbed, I cannot handle. Are ridiculous. I think that it's going to mean fewer writers because there's just not the jobs for them. Now, the writers they have left should probably get paid better because their, their seasons are shorter and things. But the there, there, yes, writers should get paid better. Thank you, Geeky Sparkles. The upside is you can work on more shows. I, I, I just, you do not need the. Well, I mean, uh, Sketchy Got Hands, uh, He Man was pretty gay as well in the 80s, so. <laughs> That's the amount of writers you have. And you cannot tell companies that they have to hire twice as many people as they need at higher rate just to make sure that more people stay employed because, you know, in the last several years, the industry, you know, demanded more, you know, it was growing and demanded more writers. But now it's shrinking because it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the sustainability and the money it used to have. And you're going to start seeing companies like gobble each other up. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the way they're this gonna, works. They're going to eat each other. Well, okay. So actually part of the problem is a lot of the bigger studios are starting to gobble each other up. Like, like it's, listen. I love the fact that uh, Marvel now has control of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men for movies. I think that's great. But from the grand scale of themes, I hate the fact that Disney bought Fox because it gives Disney way too much of a market share in the, the Hollywood studio uh, system. Just way, way too much. Uh, so, yeah, uh, like from like an actual like. Marvel fan perspective, I like the fact that they 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 bought Fox, but from an actual like living in the world perspective, uh, I hate it. <laughs> but yeah, the the idea that these corporations are like they're gonna want to gobble each other up because they want to be a monopoly and they're gonna want to push to see how close they can get to a monopoly before the government stops them. And the government's getting less and less willing to stop them as time goes by, which is another problem. And this is totally not even related to the writer's strike, who are just people who just want to make a living wage. The other out. It's called streaming. I know it's Good. called streaming wars for a reason. Eat each other's asses. That's it's Hollywood's. That's well, come on. It's gonna be like oh. a human centipede over there. This was this is my favorite part. What TV shows be affected? The late night shows will likely be the first hit, and nothing of value is lost. Well, James Corden's gone. Yes, who cares? Jimmy. Was James Corden their favorite? Fallon is drunk half the time. I mean, I, I just, mean, you know, when, oh, he was home. Is Jimmy Fallon drunk? I never got the sense he was drunk. I don't know. I never liked Jimmy Fallon, but I never got the sense he was drunk. Oh, you know, I'm just like, so fucking what? The light shows. And then, you know, next will be next. I think it's supposed to be next to be impacted with daytime TV soap operas. Yeah. Oh. They, look, th look, this has happened before and, you know. Yeah, that, I mean, I'm guessing they know that that's how writing works. Like, a movie takes, like, usually a couple years to produce. So, like, you know, usually you have, like, you can have a, up to a year of pre-production. And then, like, usually 
one to three months of production and then like a year of post. And that's fairly typical for a lot of movies. Uh, that And those times can vary. Pre-production can go out a lot longer. Most movies are lost in pre-production. Uh, usually when you get into production, that's usually when you're probably going to get a movie. You might lose a movie in post, but that's less often. Um, but there's a huge production process. So it's going to take a while for a writer's strike to impact movies. But yeah, anything like a late night show, uh, you know, they brought Star Night Live, uh, soap operas, anything where it's going to be like a regular influx of stuff, that's going to get limited. Uh, TV series, like uh, depending on how much time puts in production, it might take a while to see a real impact. Uh, so TV series, like, you know, especially the way they do it now, they probably take a year or point a year of TV series. So like they probably have about a year of TV series ready to release. And then, you know, if then there'll be a delay. What? It was fine. Actually, back then when it happened, 15 years ago, we had a different generation of writers who were actually talented and resourceful. Oh, oh, you know, because 15 years ago, uh, those writers were better. Therefore, they get to have a living wage. Um, These writers now, they don't deserve a living wage. Is that your argument? They have talented, resourceful writers now. And entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have those anymore. And they started websites like Funny or Die. Mm -hmm. They went back to Cracked. Um, There were all kinds of internet entertainment. that. I imagine we're going to see a similar thing happening now as well. Um, Like, this is just starting. You realize that, like, we're, like, hours into this strike right now. Hours. We're not going to get a whole bunch of internet content from the writers who are bored after hours into a strike that that popped up because of the writer's strike. But then that was kind of a double-edged sword because when everything came back online, people were like, well, I kind of like the internet stuff better than Mm -hmm. the the Hollywood stuff. I don't recall anybody saying that. The the, Wow. The internet stuff was decent. Um, There was decent internet stuff to come out at that time. But like nobody was saying, uh, wow, they should just stick to this internet stuff. Nobody was saying that. And and you can you can scream and and, and stop your work. And it's really not going to change anything because there are so many shows that people can't even watch everything that's out there. So yeah, and that's our point. Sketch got hands. Yeah, uh, there are still writers doing that type of stuff that that stuff didn't stop. Find another show to watch until it comes back or their show comes back on. Um, or those go, you know, watch the, the shows from the countries that they're bringing into places like Netflix. It's not going to turn out the way it did in 2007 and 2008. Okay. No. It's just not. Nope. So- well, I know in 2007, 2008, the, the, they did get a new contract. It wasn't nearly what they wanted to. As I recall, they still kind of got fucked over in that contract. But, uh, you know, um, they did get better than they would have gotten without the strike. So good on them. Um, and now we just gotta see how this strikes pays out. So talking Saturday Night Live would be affected. Has it even been funny lately? I mean, except for a couple things here and there. The show has not been funny in years. Who It has a couple of funny skits, but yeah, I'm I'm not gonna argue Saturday Night Live's been great for a while. It really has been kind of blah. Care. You could honestly probably get more mileage out of just doing clip compilations of the best of Saturday Night Live mm-hmm. when they were allowed to be funny and just run that in reruns right. and people be funny. Oh, but uh I, well, I hate the idea that when when they were allowed to be funny, uh, that's so dumb. Um, like, you know, we aren't allowing it to be funny. It's such a weird argument. But anyways, yes, as far as clip compilations for Saturday Night Live, yes, they will definitely be doing that. I mean, how many, what do you have, like, freaking 50 years of SNL? I'm sure there's sketch comedy shows that are on YouTube right now. That you- yeah, they are giving off old man energy. Absolutely. <laughs> You can just yep. watch it. It's probably funnier. Yep. And, then about, and, then, and then after that, after after late night shows and the late, late show and the late, 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 it's early morning now, shit show. We, we're going to have, we're gonna have soap operas are going to be cut. You know, the what, what three that are left, you know, and they have decades of content. Saturday Night Live. Oh. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, the, the stuff you, you guys usually like talk about, the movies and stuff, that's not going to be hit immediately. Like you understand productions. Do you understand production schedules? I mean, honestly, if you're going to do a YouTube show where you talk about this type of thing, you should probably understand production schedules. Oh, shit. Saturday Night Live might get cut, so we don't get to see a bunch of actors show up and, and, you know, pretend like they're good at something. And then they said, then we're going to have the episodic shows are going to be impacted at the end. So the ones people care about will be the last on the list of what's going to be impacted, okay? Yes, production schedules. 
Okay. And they're talking about, well, they usually begin work in May and June for preparation for September and October. Again, yeah, it might slow some of these shows down, but there's more content on Netflix and, you know, these other places that then you're ever going to watch and you yeah. ever could watch anyway. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, look, there's so much stuff that's do you think that stuff's not going to be impacted? Of course that stuff's going to be impacted. You're acting like that's a different thing. That's going to be impacted as well. Been produced on streaming, so much subpar stuff. Actually, they've had articles that uh, millennials are going back and watching linear TV. They're watching reruns of like MASH. Oh my gosh, they're watching, all these kids are like, and like you know, our kids' age, they're all going back and watching South Park and all these shows from oh, the 80s Boothman and 90s. Watching, yeah, there are, Friends, I you, mean. You, there has been so, because again, you know. Yes, because old shows exist. New shows don't need to exist. What? Oh, I mean, we've got decades and decades and decades of pop culture. And since they're just rebooting a lot of the stuff badly, people are just going back and same with comics. People are going back and reading old comic books. They're going back and buying older albums on vinyl. Well, a lot of people that are watching. doing it are, were never were there for the first time around. So, so it's all new to them. It's new to them. And it, it's the test of time. It's a pop culture it's icon for a reason. So yeah. they're going back and enjoying it too now. And it's like, you know, and so the old audience that loves it is going back. And now the, all the younger people are all, you know, clinging on to this stuff from the 80s and 90s and going back. And, you know, they don't need your new shit. They just don't. I mean, this is the sad truth. The sad truth. And this is like, I mean, like what? Yeah. Even, even in our case, you know, doing comics and doing stuff like that. The reality is, is there is so much pop culture that has been produced that we could stop producing any new pop culture tomorrow. And there would be infinite lifetimes of content for somebody to, to mm -hmm. listen to, to watch, to read. We yep, guys. Uh, because we have old stuff, uh, we don't need to produce new stuff anymore. So we're, we're just going to stop producing new stuff. Um, listen, guys, I have a huge backlog of YouTube videos for you guys to watch. Um, instead of actually doing a live stream, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to schedule streams and I'm just going to put on my backlog for you guys. That That's good, right? That's that's just as good. It's just as good, guys. You don't need new content, right? It's, it's such a weird fucking argument. We would never have to make another thing. Right. There's so much of it out so there. So that, that's the problem here. Yeah. And it's like, like again, I mean, I, I understand where they're coming from. I understand that their the seasons are shorter. They're getting paid less and everything else. And, you know, you might be tied up for months over this stuff. I get it. So maybe pay, you know, the ones that are the good ones more and then weed out the ones that aren't pulling their weight or that, are, that don't perform or that lead to shows that, that you know, get canceled because they, they suck. You know, maybe get rid of those. But now they're talking about the worst case scenario about movies. And they're like, well, it's not going to impact movies to 2024, maybe. And I'm like, well, you know what? It's not going to be different than the pandemic. Pandemic pushed movies back for a year, for years yeah. and, and people were fine. Yeah. So it's really not not going to be that big of a deal. Actually, people were fine. Yeah, no, like people in general will be fine during the strike. What are you talking about? Um. Yeah, people were fine during the pandemic. Well, people were fine movie wise during the pandemic not that they were getting movies but i guess you know they're getting streaming movies but like um yeah I, obviously uh theaters the the issue is theaters were shutting down um that would be an issue and that will affect theater workers and stuff like that um but yeah it's Yes, it, it will ev eventually affect these businesses, which will affect everybody's bottom line. Most people, you know, other than a couple of movies getting shifted around where they did not care. People went back and they watch, again, older shows, older movies. They go on strike for a, two years. If we had two years where Hollywood didn't produce anything new, most people, it wouldn't bother them. Yeah, like, I mean, let's be honest. They're talking about, oh, the longest strike of record was 1988 and lasted 153 days. 1988, when no one had streaming and it was only TV. We didn't have options. Followed by the 1960 strike at 147. That they had movies as well in 1988. Uh, and lots of people, like, you're talking about, like, oh, they didn't have streaming, so it was different. So you do realize those people who are now streaming a lot, they used to watch broadcast TV. Like, it's not like those people just didn't do anything before streaming. Those people moved from broadcast TV to streaming. So now, in 1988, they were doing broadcast TV. Six days. Again, 1960. You know, yeah. and then the 2007, 2008 strike lasted 100 days and there's more support for this strike this time around. Yeah, because there's probably five times the amount of writers there were in 2007 and 2008. And I would say 75 percent of them are activists at this point. They're working for streaming companies. Oh, well, well, they're activists. So, you know, they don't deserve to get paid. Like, what does this even mean? Like, and I'm sure when they say activists, they just mean, oh, you know, they, they have diversity in the show. So what? So what? 
because they're younger. They want to make sure they have job security. And um, yeah, I mean, it's like, look, I, I don't, I, and I feel bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're going to get laid off. Do you want to hear their okay. logic for the more support? Okay. Proves everything I'm saying. Okay. Back in 2017, they took a strike authorization and it was approved by 96.3% of the 6,310 writers who cast ballots. The, with, uh, they're talking about 2007. The authorization to vote was approved by 90% of voters. The strike operation this time was approved by 98% of eligible voting members. Notice they don't tell you how many writers are uh, eligible voting members because they don't want you to, to see what the comp- 98% of eligible voting members would be 98% of the union, I would assume. That's usually how that works. Comparison was. It's probably like, oh, back in 2017, we only had 6,000 people. Now we got like 18. I mean, there might be like, there might be like a year before you can like be a voting member. I don't know what the terms of the contract is, but that would be pretty much most of the union. And 98% is, I don't know how to tell you this, but 98% is a fucking lot of people. Thousand people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the fact is that they're calling for more people to be in the writer's room, even when they don't need to be in the writer's room. That tells me that there's way more people than there yeah, is. Yeah, you had me at yeah. the you know, more money thing, but it was when you and, and more, you know. You have to bring it. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. You're making an argument that like they shouldn't they, they shouldn't go on strike because there's a restaurant that's struggling next to a fast food chain and they're struggling for money. Therefore, they shouldn't go on strike. But now you're also saying that you're in favor of them getting more money. Geeky sparkles, you are all over the place. I feel like, I feel like you know that like uh, this is you know you're taking a pro corporation stance, you're taking a pro Disney, pro Warner Brothers stance, and you're taking an anti worker stance. And like, there's a part of you that knows that you shouldn't do that, but you're still doing it, and it's like leaking out occasionally. But no, no. But when you start telling me that that you have that you're demanding that not only you have to pay these writers more, but you have to hire a bunch of us, even if you don't need us. Yeah. That's that. No, that's not how this works. Um, I'm this, sorry. This is a great opportunity for studios outside of Hollywood, outside of the WGA to be like, we're going to make content. Do you want to license our content, Netflix? Do you want to, you know, that's that's a great example. And unfortunately, they will. So anyway. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm not I don't want to bash on independent people. But yeah, uh, well, that's also the thing. Like uh, a lot of these studios, if they work with the unions, um, they're prior required to take stuff from unionized people unless there's some sort of uh unless they're willing to break contract of course the yeah we'll just have to see how it goes okay you know they're all everybody it sounds like other other guilds are gonna they're yeah, their they're contracts all, all up too to, yeah. and they're all gonna want more money and more jobs too because what's going on is and they all see it is that it's all shrinking the pie is shrinking because they're gonna focus on quality pie that's smaller pie and that means that you know a lot of these people aren't gonna be part of the pie anymore yeah so the studio can continue to make money and is it you're fine with the studio essentially fucking over writers as long as it increases profit. And I'm sorry, that sucks, but Hollywood doesn't understand math. It's like that, if, if the economy isn't supporting you, you can't. I mean, any other company, if your company has to cut people because they're, they're you know, there's, there's not enough jobs. You can't sit there and demand, well, I want more pay and I want you to hire. That's a good point. You can't shrink or grow a pie. <laughs> for, for each shift, we have to have 20 more people paying paid when there isn't enough work for the people you have there. Just be happy these Hollywood studios aren't sending the Pinkertons to tell you not to, <laughs> yeah, not to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Hasbro's going back yeah, to you, Yeah, right? You're working in toys now. They're going to send the Pinkertons after you. We're um, wrapping this up. I think we're wrapping it up. It's a weekend. We're just whatever. I, I just can't. I just can't. I guess our thing is we just can't wrap our head around it. Like, it just. I. I, I just, yeah, how dare people want a living wage? I can't wrap my head around people wanting a living wage. Uh, just what the hell? This, the entitlement is off the chart, and and the people are like, you're anti-union. No, no, I think if people are being mistreated, if people are being overworked and underpaid and put in dangerous positions, unions are fantastic. Yes, I think that you know. Hey, hey, hey! You're getting there. You're getting there, geeky sparkles. I think there's hope for you. I think there's hope for you. So asking for more money. Um, on some of these projects that are going very well makes sense. Yeah, you should be paid in accordance with what you're bringing. Right. right. But I also think there's way more writers than there were last time there was a strike. I think there's way fewer, there was way more shows than there were then, but they're cutting these shows right and left. There is not enough room at the table for all the people that are currently working in there. And that's just a sad Well, I mean, considering the executives are still bringing a uh, hell of paychecks, I would like to know what your source is that they can't pay the writers more. The reality of it, I do not, we do not take joy in it. We're just pointing out the fact that there's no more seats to the table. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly, Scott. Be glad the studios aren't sending thugs to beat you. Good point. Yeah, that was essentially what he was saying. So, uh, 
classy. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, look. We'll make a new table. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Yeah, again, in a different era, and I, I do believe that there are going to be some people that will get get the clue and be like, yeah, we can't depend on Hollywood anymore. We have to go do our own thing. And he might be more successful. I know, I know there isn't actually hope for her, but like, you know, occasionally she says something. It's like, hey, you're getting it. You're almost there. Just take that extra step. That's what we're, we're doing it. Yeah, I think this this might be the wake up call that a lot of these Hollywood people need to be like, we can't put all of our eggs in one basket anymore. Like, we got to go. And I, I would love to see, I personally would love to see whether it's it's animation or with, um, you know, Hollywood productions, movies, whatever. I would like to see the entertainment industry broken up, fragmented, scattered all over the country. You want to talk about diversity. So it's not just in one location. Right. You want to talk about diversity. You want to talk about, you know, getting, different points of view, different points of view, different voices. We we start little pockets of studios all over the country because we have the technology now. We can do it. And people can be making making movies in Minnesota and not even have a Hollywood connection. Be like, we got a studio in Minnesota. Do you want. What does this have to do with the writer's strike? What? What? <laughs> Movies with a Minnesota flavor. We we make those and then we we license them out to Hollywood studios. We get them done on our own terms, and that's how it works. And basically, Hollywood becomes a distributor or something. Or maybe maybe there's that's primarily what the studios do. Lots of times, they're distributors. Distributor in Florida. Or maybe there's a distributor in you know. I mean, you do realize that lots of movies are just sold to the studio and they distribute them. You realize that happens a lot, right? That's not an uncommon thing. Kansas or Pittsburgh, yes, there's a lot. This needs to happen because every all the power is centralized in Hollywood and it actually is a problem. It's a huge problem that all the power is centralized in Hollywood. Well, yeah. So let's let's limit their power and do a strike and support that strike. Hey, hey. So, we need to break this up. And if the producers and directors and other actors are, are, are feel that strongly about them striking and they feel that they, they are right to do so, they are more than they can always take pay cuts yeah. to make sure that the writers have more writers hired and more. Well, how about the executives take a pay cut? Because that's what we're talking about at the end of the day. Um, lots of the, the actors and stuff, are, they have stronger unions than the Writers Guild. Um, lots of these guys are very strong unionized, so like they're not getting a pay cut. Uh, a pay cut's going to come from the top, which, yeah, um, I'm cool with that. Or writers are paid better. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, so uh, anyway, you first. And then <laughs> Yeah, right. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views. Well, it was a while, but like, that was just dumb. That was so goddamn dumb. All right, so apparently Yell Flash covers this. So uh, I haven't looked at Yell Flash for a while. So let's let's see what classy takes he has, because he always has the classy takes, you know. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth.